So this is today's agenda. We're going to we're going to make some enhancements to the sample application. Hopefully everybody's familiar with that application. If you're not, it's very easy to install in your application. You can go ahead and do some of these afterward. And uh, I know you're trying to escape from work, but I'm going to bring you right back into it. We're going to take some specifications and implement them. And of course, all of these will involve dynamic actions. Let's just dive right in. Specification number one. The application should disable the alternate phone field until the phone number field is filled in. What are they talking about here? Let's take a look. What I have here is a copy of the sample application. Go ahead and start this up. And uh, alternate phone field, they're probably talking about customers. So we'll drill into the customer form. Uh, phone and alternate phone. All right, so what they're saying is, if this isn't filled in, we don't want people filling this in. Makes sense, right? So how can we do this? How can we implement this using the new dynamic actions? Well, you have to think things through first. My question to you is, what is the driver here? What's the determining factor? Anybody? Phone number, right? And more specifically, maybe phone number field is null or phone number field is not null, depending on how you look at it. So that becomes your when, when phone number field is not null. Next question, what should happen if that's true? Or not null, it has a value, right? So if it has a value, then we want to enable alternate, right? Of course, follow-up question, what should happen if that's false? The exact opposite, right? Let's take a look and see if we can do this. I'm going to go to edit the page. And of course, I'm using the new tree view. Hopefully, everybody here is doing the same. Yeah. You have two ways to add dynamic actions. You can go right to your driver, or you can come down to the bottom and right click here. I tend to go around the item. So the driver was the regular phone number. I'll right click, go to create dynamic action. And here we have a fork in the road, right? We have standard and advanced dynamic actions. And the truth is that they're one and the same. It's just that when you choose standard, some of the decisions are made for you, right? Some of the most common are made for you. And the first two specifications we'll be implementing today use the standard. The rest do not. So let's start here. You have to give your dynamic action a name. And my recommendation is just to name it based on that driver that you've thought of. So in this case, the phone number field is populated. And look at where we are here. We're at the when. We talked about the when, right? We thought about this logically. So we know how we need to configure this. When the phone number field is not equal to, but is not null, we said, right? Well, when that's true, we want to enable field, yes? And look at this option right here. Create the opposite false action. It's going to do this for us automatically. We don't have to do it, which is great. It doesn't have to be true. Technically, yes, it does. Mm -hmm. So, with the selection type, we know that we want to enable or disable an item, so we can go right to that, but you do have a number of other options here. Let's start with items. Come down, the alt phone is phone number two. That's what I want to enable or disable. I'll move that over and click create. Subsequently, you can find your dynamic action in two places. You can drill down on the item, you'll see them here, or you can again go to the bottom. Let's run the page and see if it works. Phone number is populated. I can get in here no problem. Phone number is not populated. I can't get in here. Right? So this is nice. We didn't have to write a single line of code. Before, when I started, this was a pain. Not only was it a pain, but then you had to learn that you needed this to work when the page initialized as well. These things are declarative now, a little checkbox, rather than having to 
double the code or write init functions and things like that. One of the nice things that they used here is this little plugin. You start to type, you, you know, go away without making sure it fits the format. It just clears it out. So we can actually get exactly the functionality we're looking for here. Yeah, that's a plugin. So specification one, complete. Relatively easy, right? Let's actually take a look. I want to show you something. When you saw the field disabled, do you know what actually happened to this element? Anybody? It's kind of hard to tell just looking at it, right? So let's take a closer look. I'm going to right click. I can't right click here. Nothing happens. The element's disabled. Uh, actually, let me populate this so we can get this. I'll right click here. I'm going to go down to inspect element. And notice this window opens up, and we're focused on this input element here. Uh, if you look at it, you'll see various attributes associated with the element. Clear this out. This time I need to go next to it. Go back to the same input element now that it's disabled. And what do we see? Two things. Number one. We have a class applied to it, Apex Disabled. Number two, you look right to the right, you'll see that it has a disabled attribute. That's actually what prevents us from getting into it. I'm kind of curious though, why is this class here? Anybody know? Yeah, it gives us a better idea. What would it look like without? Keep your eye here, remove it, there you go. So we can actually get in here and, and, and work with the elements lock. Right? In order to do that, you have to use a browser that helps you do your job. Okay? These days, there's actually a number of them. Uh, in fact, even IE is catching up. Frankly, in my honest opinion, Firefox is still the best browser to use for development. And the main reason for that is it has Firebug. Firebug allows you to do all kinds of things that you would not normally be able to do in a browser such as real-time inspection and modification, as you just saw me do. You can even access a command line tool for uh, getting into JavaScript, advanced debugging capabilities like you have in SQL Developer. And keep in mind, dynamic actions actually have a little bit of debug written already for you. They use console. Console is a feature of modern browsers that does not exist in IE. So Firefox has all of this, and I recommend you use it. Let's take a look. I want to show you two of these. I've already shown you real-time inspection and modification. I want to look at the command line tool and the console. All you have to do to access the console is click on the console tab. And this is your command line tool over here. Simple hello world. Control enter. Executes the JavaScript as though it were in the page. Console just told me what was executed. We can also output to the console. It's a little bit like using DBMS output dot put line. Same line. Look in the console, tells us what executed, and then we can see the text below. This is actually how the uh, the debug works with dynamic actions. You're not going to get anything in the PL SQL world. So keep that in mind. You'll need a browser that works or uses console. We'll look at that. We'll look at an example using that a little later. What else can you use or learn about to bridge the gap between what you want to do and what's currently available natively in dynamic actions? 